All right, welcome back to uh, Proctology 101. No, we're not gonna go there. What's going on? Welcome back to the Let There Fly YouTube channel. As you can see here, we have a motor out of a Can-Am Outlander and in this little short, I think probably three or four part series here, we are going to be rebuilding this bad boy. Yep. So basically, part one, we're gonna tear this thing down, show you how to tear it down, what tools you'll need to do that. And then in the next two episodes, most likely, we're gonna be rebuilding this thing. And then the fourth, possibly third episode, whichever one it ends up playing out to be, it's going into a quad. So this is an 850 out of an 850 XMR, actually the same years as Cess 2018. Yep. And um, unfortunately, it sounded like this when I bought it. Yeah, so this thing's got some rod knock. And so unfortunately, somehow it managed to lose oil. Don't ask me how a motor loses oil. It usually can either leak out or um, it's burning oil. So um, I have a feeling it might have been burning it or we have a bad seal or something like that going on. We'll have to find that out when we dig in. But we're gonna be doing a complete tear down of this thing today, seeing what parts I got to order and everything. And then uh, we're just gonna let the fun begin basically. All right guys, one disclosure is the fact that we are not professionals and we might not know all the terms to what we're talking about. Like yes. this could be a flux capacitor. Who the hell knows? We'll figure it out That's as we go. That's actually a crank position sensor, I'm pretty sure. All right, Mr. Know-it-all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I've rebuilt other motors in the past, small motors, big motors out of cars, you name it. Um, I haven't, so. Seth, Seth hasn't, this is the first time for him. And this I wanted is, to be here for this. Yeah, this is my first Can-Am motor. So like any motor, it should be pretty basic as far as what goes on with it. We just gotta make sure we do the right things by following the factory manual, which is what we're gonna be doing. And we're gonna be checking out some stuff, making sure everything is correct before we put it back together. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, start stripping this thing down. So I actually did start to disassemble this um, motor a little bit myself because I wanted to see what exactly happened to it, make sure I got a good deal on it because I did grab this off Facebook Marketplace and uh, you know how that could go sometimes. Uh, I already knew it had problems, I just wanted to make sure it was salvageable. Um, so usually you'll have an intake here, you remove uh, these 10 mil bolts it looks like here, um, and then the whole intake pops off, that's super easy. But then you get to this point where you just have the motor heads, um, the jugs and everything, and now we're gonna go ahead and tear it all down. So my side's already loose. Seth's gonna loosen up his side right, right now. And Seth, what size uh, socket do you got over there? Uh, what are we gonna start with? We're gonna start with an eight. So Sweet. It is an eight for the valve covers? Yep, eight for the valve covers. And I believe these are actually the same bolts they use for the uh, belt box, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> actually, they look like it. I'm pretty positive they are. Yeah, this motor's been sitting since the beginning of this year. I uh, bought this with STM clutch and some other stuff, so I got a really good deal on the whole package. I actually basically got the motor for free, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, you, you got a screaming deal on that. All right, so once you got the valve cover off, uh, you're gonna be presented with your camshaft and your uh, rockers and everything. Um, so I already actually took the cam, um, the timing chain off and the cam gears before. Um, you can go ahead and do that. It just takes an Allen key, so that's gonna have the size for you in a little bit here. But I'm gonna go ahead and get these head studs out, which we'll give you a size here in a minute. All right, so one thing you're gonna wanna do when you do any kind of engine breakdown or any kind of, a lot of you don't know where it goes back to or if you wanna have everything organized, get yourself some cheapo bags. zip locks because you can throw all your parts in it. So right now we're gonna throw all the valve cover bolts into one bag, just so we don't lose them because this engine's gonna sit apart for probably a week or two while I get all the parts together and in for it. Um, Why you do that? You know, you could also write down what everything is. So if you're unsure, just, you know, use a Sharpie, write it down. Yep. So it is always a good practice to um, put new head studs and bolts in, whatever, whichever you have, uh, whatever kind of motor this uses bolts. Uh, you can upgrade two studs. So I'm not going to because stay in stock compression for now and everything. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, timing chain gear here. This goes on the camshaft. We're just gonna get that guy out of our way. Had to use the most obnoxious tool we have. Yes. So this is a five millimeter Allen. So it's gonna make sure he strips them out perfectly for me. Yes. You just give her a little wiggle. Do you wanna put these in the same bag? What do you wanna do? Uh, Get a different bag. Um, actually, I think we have to loosen up the the tensioner. Yeah. 
what do you got for that? Uh, that's probably eight millimeter also. So cool little uh, insight here real quick while we're doing this. So we're actually gonna be trying out a different chain tensioner in this motor, uh, supplied by Quad Logic actually. They are actually sending us over a prototype. That's right. So Marshall is the pure guinea pig on this one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they sent us over, they already actually sent it over. Um, so it's, uh, I believe it's billet aluminum. Um, yeah, something, yeah, it's something fancy, I know that. It looked like billet, it's definitely aluminum. Probably stuck on there, because it's... Probably, you got Oh, a, there it goes. Oh, you got okay. That's it. I was going to say, it should just have an O-ring. I'm going to grab that guy. Probably going to have all new O-rings and stuff. Here's your chain tensioner. Now this gear. bag do you want this in? Uh, put all the chain stuff with, like the gear okay. for both of them. We got to get the other gear off, I just kind of set it over there. So we're not going to go ahead and disassemble the heads completely um, as far as like the cams and everything go. We're not going to do that um, right this minute. We're going to get the motor itself mostly all tore down. Here's your stuff. In the bag it goes. All right, and then once you get to that point, now it's time to remove the head studs, and then we have the um, bolts that hold in. We come to the side that has some light. We've got two little small bolts in here, so these are going to be two eight mils. I already have them loosened up, and then we have the larger. Uh, what size did we determine this was? Twelve, I think. Uh, we didn't determine anything. Let's see. So these are going to be going in the bag with our head studs when we get a bag for that. I'll get the other side out real quick. Yep. Oh, yeah. you actually have them. I, this head was already off. Okay. Yeah, I already, I already jumped the gun a little bit because I had to see what we had to, or at least I got a good deal on something. Starting a new bag? <laughs> huh? Starting a new bag? Yeah, with all the head studs here. So head studs are all the same length. Um, basically, uh, you should replace these at any time you have the engine apart. Uh, we're gonna do the right thing and reuse them. All right, so now when removing the head studs, you want to go gently, and don't use an impact for this step. She's going to be tight. I'm just trying not to. Yeah, don't snap it and make my day fun. No. Does it feel like it wants to strip or not? It doesn't feel like it wants to strip. Oh, jeez. You hear my shoulder pop? Yeah. <laughs> Shut when we get the big wrench out. How does it feel in there? Oh, yes. Yeah, here you get the little three inch in one. You always want to do this with a wrench because you impact it and you strip them or you can accidentally Break crack it. them and you're done. You're done. All right. Other side. Now, you already get those off. Those are already off. Okay. Actually, actually, they're completely off. So we'll okay. just use our little the annoying tool. Alright. So now that That's fine. That's fine. Alright, so here comes the moment of truth now. Seth's gonna go ahead and pull this head. Don't worry about the chain tensor falling in the neck. Alright, let's give her a yank then. There you go. That's the head. Nice you got the antifreeze. Ooh. Nice and pretty. That you can set in the box, I guess. All right. Uh, then we'll pop the other head off. Doesn't matter which one, because we'll no, tell them. No, I wasn't worried about that. It was more just. That one's already loose. Oh. <laughs> All right, now you can slide these out, pretty sure. Or maybe not. I'm lying. I'll just slide this one out. Just Chain put guides. that in the way in the doorway. Look fine. Yeah, see, look at this cylinder over here. This is when I started tearing apart before. Oh, wow. A lot of carbon buildup. All right. Now. See if you can get the jug off here. You might have to tap it with a mount, possibly. Try pulling it, see if she Just wiggles. this section right here. Yep. She should go. We need a rubber mallet or pry yeah. it, the plastic. Don't be chipping my stuff up, man. It wasn't a chip, that was a splash. Whatever. We're cleaning all this stuff up. Oh, you ruined my head gasket. Look at that. <laughs> Yummy. All right, so it feels smooth. what we want to look for brutal. here in the oh, jug. Light. Actually, let's get a rag and just clean it out real quick. 
is to see if we still see some cross hatching or if we see up and down down movement. So there's some nice still cross action. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. See how it's kind of diagonal like that. But then see over here it's a little bit grooved up. Yeah, I'll let you hold on to that. I'll start taking this one. She is a little grooved upwards and downwards but not bad. Up. We will check these jugs out to see if they're salvageable. They should be. Might just have to clean them up and be good to go. Now I do want to check out the rings. This How's that one looking? It doesn't look bad either. Uh, this one's got a little bit of... I'm not saying it looks f awesome, but... I don't feel any lip and I don't see any deep grooves or anything like that. There is a little bit of upwards and downwards. There's some cross hatching on the bottom still, but as you move upwards you see a little bit of scratching going on, but there is still cross hatching, which means it didn't dig in that much, so a simple hone job might clean those up and those should be good to go. And then we're down to this point here. We're making pretty good progress here. So let me show Seth now and the people at home. Actually, let me come over to the other side. Uh, actually, we'll just have to do this side because that cylinder's down in. But if you can see down in there, it's gonna be a little hard to see. I should not be able to move the rod back and forth like so. The entire rod is just moving back and forth on the crankshaft, so that means we spun a bearing, which I was correct, and that means that crank and these rods are shot because they have seen extreme heat, and we will show you guys that when we go for the teardown. If you give her a wiggle side to side, you can feel it. She should not move like that. That one's gonna be shot too, most likely, but it's hard to see, because, yeah. There's always gonna be a little bit of play in the pistons, uh, the pins, no. which is right there, but you shouldn't be able to move the whole True. rod back and forth like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're to the point where I left off at. So now we gotta do some more disassembly here. We're gonna clean up all this gasket surface. All new gaskets we're gonna throw in here. Obviously, you don't wanna reuse any of this. That'd be oh, silly. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and get the case opened up. So we're gonna spin the motor around, start with the back side, get all that stuff taken care of. Actually, no, we'll start with the front side here. Let's get the, um, this is where our flywheel is, the stator and all that fun stuff. So let's get that all opened. All right guys, so one thing we're just gonna do real quick, I wanna show you something you can do to check to see um, what might have gone wrong with your motor if you like lost compression or something. So as we saw, we just took the jugs off here and uh, you got your piston rings here. So these basically help keep the compression in the top of the engine, but they also help keep the oil down inside the engine. It keeps the two separated. So um, first thing you always wanna check for is see if you can move the rings around nice and easy, which you can on this one, because if you lean the motor out really bad, you can actually cause this to melt down and actually pinch the, um, usually the top ring, usually the bottom one doesn't get it, and sometimes even crack a piston. And um, you always wanna make sure they still are nice and springy feeling. They should have a pretty wide gap to them when you pop them out. If you take them out and they're like this, that's a problem, that means that that ring saw a lot of heat, and that is not good. But we're gonna go more over rings and how they install them, all that fun stuff um, when we do the engine rebuild, because there's a certain way they have to go in. There is a top and a bottom. Um, there's a groove here. Everything has to be set right. So we're gonna go over all that stuff when it's going together. But for right now, we're gonna continue the breakdown. All right, so Seth's gonna handle the back of the motor. I'm gonna handle the, um, well, actually, that's the drive side. This is where the, uh, stator is in the flywheel and everything, so I'm gonna handle this side. There's not too much behind that cover, so that's gonna realize. But uh, first, let's just remove our little plastic shield here. It's a heat shield. It takes a T25 here. We're gonna get this out of the way. Because we're also gonna be cleaning up this entire motor while it's out, because this is probably the last time it's gonna ever be cleaned. Cleaned, and then it's gonna be suffocating in mud the rest of its life, sorry. Uh, this this side of the motor here, um, it's just uh, eight millimeters. Eight millimeters over there. Cool. Yeah. All right, uh, where's let's start the bag for? So I cracked these to make sure they were loose before using this impact. This is just a more of a speed thing now. Yeah, a lot of those were cracked loose already because, like I said, I wanted to inspect the motor a little bit before um, going too far deep into it because I didn't want to. Go ahead, oops, I just moved my camera. Didn't want to order parts for this thing and find out that it is completely useless. 
Oh, and that should be everybody. Yes. So there is a little tiny zip tie here for, it looks like I'm guessing the crank position sensor. I could be wrong if I am. I'll throw a little thing up on the screen here. If he's wrong, please beat him up because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's pretty sure about everything. Jerk. Well, I mean, I've rebuilt a motor or two using a plastic hammer here. Just try to crack her loose here without breaking it because I don't want to have to buy a new sensor. Don't be so cheap. You call me cheap? <laughs> there she is. Actually, I said don't be so cheap. Yeah, it looks like a crank position sensor. Put this in the baggie with all the good stuff. And then now we got all of these lovely bolts here we got to remove. So I need this guy. And because we're dealing with aluminum on aluminum, or no, sorry, um, usually steel bolts inside aluminum, they usually like to see, seize themselves in there. So you're gonna have to just go through everything and just hand. Just hand break them. Hand break them, then you can get in there with the impact and speed them, speed them out. That one I think I use a screwdriver to pop off. Wait, is it coming? Yes. All right, I'm all cracked loose here. I'm sure somebody will have an issue with how I did that. So that is some of the, uh, I believe, oil gears. That's like looking at it like, what do I got here? There is a bearing there that looks like it got a little hot, so we're gonna have to replace that guy. Let's, let's not lose parts, Sith. I mean, she had a little oil in her. Look at that. Oh yeah, she had oil uh, at the very end. He, well, so, <laughs> so after he realized he basically blew this thing up uh, when he got home, uh, he tried putting oil in it because he got home and said there was no oil in it. All right, in a second here, we're gonna go ahead and tap this guy off and see what we got inside. All right guys, so it just took off this side. You can see the timing chains. Yeah, it's not a timing chain. Oh, it is timing chain. Yeah, it's timing chain. Um, not much else going on here. Just wanted to give you a quick look onto this side, what we're looking at. All right, so I'm pretty sure that this is actually our oil gears here for the oil pump. So this is what helps drive the oil pump. And then I'm guessing one of the other gears we had goes here. So you're gonna wanna inspect all these, make sure you're not missing any teeth because that could have been the reason why, just like this motor, unfortunately you lose oil pressure. Uh, Cause that's basically what happened. He said he had no oil. You can already start to see, unfortunately there is some shiny Good old metallic stuff right there, which is something you don't want to see when you're tearing apart a motor. All right, let's see if we can get this guy to crack loose here. Let's just give her a tap with the hammer. There she goes. This might be a little hard to pull off because um, I think the magnet comes out with this, so. You're fighting against a magnet while doing this, which is always fun. Yep, there's a magnet. I feel it sucking back in. Come on, baby. There's a screwdriver. That's, yeah, this freaking thing's sticking to it. Now he's getting dirt in my motor. Yep, that's magnetism is what that is. There it goes. All right, and there's your stator. We're gonna, um, Test this actually. There is a way to test it without the quad running. I'm basically just going to do an ohm test on it. Uh, we're going to look at the specifications. So when we're doing the first initial rebuild, um, we're going to be going over a lot of stuff on how to test a lot of these components to make sure they're still good and reusable for putting the quad back together and everything. So now's the next part, and you're going to need some specialized tools. We're going to go over with you. Um, I think we should take the pistons off now just to get them out of our way. Uh, what we need for that is a pair of needle nose. All right guys, so to remove the pistons, we're just gonna get them out of our way real quick. Uh, there's gonna be a little tiny circlips. They look like this <coughs> on the inside of the motor. Camera won't focus on it because it's, oh, there it goes. So they're gonna be right on the ends um, of your wrist pins, they're called. And you just use a pair of needle nose, basically just kind of, kind of grab it like so, kind of pull it down in and then just remove it and everything. So she's out of the way. Then should just be able to push the wrist pin through, keyword should, unless this is the side that doesn't want to come out. There it goes. Oh, don't be dropping sockets. Well, here, I got the frick piston out already. Did you? Yeah, I'll oh. have to push it out all the way. You can leave it like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove the rings now, just this way I can put them in a baggie with the clips for the wrist pins here. 
it does rings still have nice tension on them and everything so I'm gonna put new rings in it anyway because it's worth it right all right guys so now to get the flywheel off you're gonna need some special tools like we said uh, you're gonna need a flywheel puller and something that you might not have lying around like we just didn't have so we had to go ride to AutoZone 14 millimeter Allen hex whatever you want to call it I couldn't think of the name of it I don't know why but and a big ass impact All right, so we're gonna try this. Uh, we're gonna put the bolt in a little bit here because I'm not sure how the Mr. RPM tool is supposed to work here. If there's supposed to be a flat plate, but we're hoping it's not gonna destroy that bolt. If it does, I can at least get the bolt. And I mean, the crank's gotta be replaced anyway, so <laughs> that's fine. Impact this off. Looks like this is a 24. I do not like how that feels. Boom. Look at that. Just like that. Except I think the bolt stuck to it. <laughs> I'm gonna put the oil filter stuff with the water pump stuff because it all kind of goes Ten. together. And then with the uh, 815 1000, I believe the 1000 has it too, uh, there is an oil radiator we have to remove. And if you're rebuilding your motor because you accidentally swamped your motor, ooh, this has oil still on this, uh, then you're gonna want to uh, replace on that because that guy gets clogged up with mud and everything. There is oil, or sorry, metal shavings coming out of the oil filter cavity. Oh, that's great. There it is. So Seth is removing the starter while I am playing with the freaking flakes of <laughs> oil and crap. Okay. One side to the other. They didn't make it easy to change that starter. Either. One side than the other. Okay. Now while we're in here, we might also um, we're putting the motor back together. We're throwing on some speed parts that do absolutely nothing as far as horsepower, but they look cool. Uh, Quad Logic has some pretty cool Is stuff. Anybody yeah, else? Or aluminum we covers and some other stuff we're gonna throw on here just to. We are. Oh, I'm gonna be. Cool. Spice it up a little bit, you know? Oh my goodness. Why is this thing so tight? It's, it's held like... in by a rubber o ring. Yeah, it's like fused in there with mud and. I'm trying to change that in the clock. Seriously. Try not to uh, push too hard on anything. You don't happen to have like. Okay, there's our water pump. You got a bigger screwdriver or. Pretty good here. Small pry bar? Either or. Small pry bar. Or small or bigger screwdriver. Wow. Starter is in there. Yeah, she is. There's no other bolt, huh? No. There, there she is. This Starter's little, out. Little love tap. Looks good. Little All the gears are good. Left Perfect. Uh, Just to get my one head. bolt. Where's the second bolt for the starter? Down here, we're just getting the drive shaft out here. Uh, I just wanted to show you one thing that um, a lot of people say, oh, you gotta do is flush the motor when you swamp it. Um, I'm gonna show you why you can't do that, and we're gonna show you also why you can't well, do that. You we can do that. Yep, well, here's why you can't do that. No, you can. So, this is the oil cooler for the motor. You are never gonna get this thing clean. I can see down inside here, I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, it is all clogged with metal shavings from when this thing spun a bearing. So this thing has to be replaced. And there's also an oil screen in here that we're probably gonna check out here. It's gonna be all filled up with the same stuff. And the same thing can happen to your motor when it gets swamped. It's gonna be filled with mud and everything. So you can, there it is. You can be that guy to flush your motor, but uh, this is the right way to do it, is to tear down the motor and replace some stuff and then it'll live forever. So you shut it off in time. So now, 
We're actually going to set the motor on its side here. We are. Like it's easy thing to do, so we can... Go ahead. Well, here, want to get a bag out? So basically we got everything um, loosened up. The reason you, have to you don't have to take the shaft all the way out just yet. Um, there you go. But there is a... Uh, it, does, it won't pull through unless you go the other way with it, which I'll try not to take this end piece off. <coughs> there is a lot of bolts here we got to take out. Yeah, they're all different lengths and stuff. So. And then they're eights, they're ten. Did you snap the bolt for the... Did you miss the bag or did it go through the bag? Huh? Did I snap the bolt for what? Oh, no, no, I just, uh, I just thought it's a... Uh, there's a hole in it. <laughs> nice. Fucking Ziploc. Oh, they're not Ziploc, though. So. We're gonna need a eight millimeter still because we gotta get to light it smaller. Eight millimeter. We go. Oh. So there's literally like a thousand screws you gotta do. And you just gotta try to find all of them. Got my three. At least a lot of them are all the same sizes, even though there's a couple different sizes. Yeah, it looks like tens and eights for the most part. That's fine. We have to go in there anyway. <laughs> Alright, so that doesn't look too bad. Got a little bit of metal, but not bad. Alright, I'm gonna have to just get a uh, snap ring to the wire tool. Yeah. Keep loose stuff. I gotta pull it hard. Uh, my side of the motor stuff, huh? Yep. Which one's my side? I'm guessing this is the oil pump right here, so we're gonna take this all out real quick. This is my side. I had all these. Think it's right there. Uh, you get it or not? Yeah, here it goes. That is the oil pump. Okay. All right, so here's your oil pump. It has a pin in this. We can't lose any of this stuff. Here's I'm taking it out because we're going to be cleaning this whole case. But so that should be it, minus this one freaking thing. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to put this bag over here for right now. Uh, it first here. Yeah, I would just try and loosen her up, possibly just slightly. Can you try to hit it on this? There it goes. Holy shit, you actually got it? Nice. There you go. Ooh. All right guys, so we got the case split now, so they can take a look and see what we got here. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna move, remove the crank. And here we go, we can see the one that flopped into my hand. So the reason for this is what happened with this motor here, I shouldn't be able to move that like that. So this one's a little too snug, there's probably got metal shavings in it, so that's probably why it's a little, little tight, tighter than I would like, but uh, this one's yeah, completely gone. Now, um, as you can see here, some cranks do come through and they have a little bit of discoloration, but a lot of this is most likely from heat. Let's see if we can't get a little closer. So there you can go. actually see the two two rods looks like they saw a lot of heat too, because this was probably, believe it or not, it'll get like almost glowing red um, in order to turn, uh, what do you call it, hardened steel like that into uh, discoloration. So yeah, that's no good, unfortunately, but all you can do is uh, get a new crank for it, some new rods and new um, bearings and everything. We can throw this thing back together. Now we're just going to disassemble a few more things here. So, uh, I don't know what I should do with this. Uh, probably throw it in the garbage can, really. Uh, yeah, technically, yeah, I should. Mm -hmm. It's actually a good metal pile. I want to pull the actual bearings apart and see. Yeah. But now I can actually take out this uh, dry shaft. You can take this dry shaft out when the motor's together. I'm just choosing not to because. Uh, this thing's a pain about to get off, and I might have to at the sea yet. I might have to replace this bearing here because it had a little bit of play. It feels like I can move the end cap a little bit here, which I don't love. So yeah. I might just throw a new bearing in that just to be safe. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you? Uh, why the whole you're gonna do apart. the whole motor? You're gonna you're gonna save what ten yeah, bucks for a bearing? That's why I wanted to tear it apart before um, ordering all my stuff. 
So if we get into here more, um, this is where I wanted to show you guys. That's a big reason to why, if you guys swamp a motor, this is why I want you guys to rebuild the motor because this is what you can run into. So this is our oil filter screen. That's all metal shavings in the oil filter screen. So imagine you just swamped your motor and in mud, most likely, unless you manage to do it in clean water, which some people have, but uh, this is gonna pick up all that stuff. So what's gonna happen is, is over time, yes, you flush your motor, it runs great and everything, but unfortunately, this is gonna get so restricted that eventually oil is not gonna really go through that and you're gonna be low on oil pressure and this thing is gonna eventually grenade itself. So if you have the time, it actually costs less, I think, to do this if you don't have hurt any parts, uh, to buy a seal kit for the motor, then it will, if you put like 15 gallons of diesel through it and then Especially like in today's 30, prices. Yeah, 30 freaking oil changes and stuff like that. Believe it or not, this might be actually simpler. <laughs> That's why we're kind of doing this video also, not just to show me repairing this motor and putting a new crank and everything in it, but also to show like this kind of stuff. This is why it's important to change out, um, just to tear the motor down if you ever um, unfortunately swamp your motor. That's the way I'm gonna do it. It sucks, yes it does, especially if you're not very experienced, but that's why I wanna make this video for you guys to show you exactly kinda of how to do it. So yeah, we're basically all the way tore down. I'm just gonna clean some stuff up now, and uh, I think that's gonna be just about it for today, cause uh, we just gotta clean up a couple things in Don't here. Don't forget you lost a bolt in there. Yeah, that's fine, we can leave it in there. That'll be, uh, oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. Oops, I dropped it again. I don't know where it was from though. <laughs> Dude, this, this oil is so gritty. Gritty, yeah. Is it? That's why it's, I got to feel all around my fingers here. There she is. I don't remember what yeah, it came if you, off If you of. look at my fingers, I don't know if the, the um, camera will pick it up. So metal flakes and stuff. Yeah, it's all no good. Yeah, so that's, that could be mud in your motor. And it's just, even though you flushed the motor a bunch, that's what's floating around in there, dude. I mean, not the good stuff. Stuff you don't want floating around in your motor where there's very tight clearances and stuff like that. And you can score up your bearings and all kinds of other stuff it's just not worth it some people get lucky and yes they have many hours and stuff on their motors to be honest with the mud we have by us i'm pulling the motor it sucks but it actually doesn't take long to take the motor out of the quad which you guys will see um drop a comment down below which quad you think this 850 is going into i mean really what Really? Well, you have an 850 already, so really? that's kind of a... <laughs> really? I mean, obvi it's, it's kind of an obvious answer. Really? <laughs> Dude, the little 500 needs so, more power. Somebody's got to get something ready for Bisco. Yes, so we are going to Busco Beach. Uh, join you guys at Mud Bash this year. We got ourselves an Airbnb, like not even five minutes from the park. So make sure you guys come. If you guys are local, we're going to be riding with hopefully a little bit of everybody. I normally don't have vacation that time of year, so I was like... Wait a minute, I actually have vacation. So, yeah, go. I'm going. So, I just booked it and Marshall decided he wanted to jump in. That's Perfect. Right. So, but anyway, let's get back to this. Dude, look at that. So shiny. So, because the uh, motor was only run for a short amount of time, the main bearings actually for the crank look actually pretty dang decent but we're gonna be replacing those anyway because why the heck not you're already in here i'm just trying to get all the oil drained out we might as well leave this on that pan and just let it drain and then this one i can get in the parts washer maybe later today not sure if we're gonna do that. and i'll film maybe a little bit of that for you guys so this way we can uh show a little bit of the cleanup actions so we gotta get all this old gasket off of here and clean up the surfaces good don't go at it with one of those sanding disc things, please. Don't be that guy. Yeah, she don't look bad. No, dude, it's, I mean, she's in good shape. So we just, uh, real quick, got a little interested and want to see uh, what the bearings look like. So the first one I want to remove is, was still okay. If I can get it off, it's stuck on there. You just popped it. I did just pop it. Oh, it's stuck to the freaking thing. Oh, nice, the bearing came right out. It's stuck to the shaft. That's not That's ideal. And here's the bad one. Oh yeah, that is a completely blown out bearing. Look at that thing. Oh my goodness. That should be like that thick all the way around. So 
So she spun a bearing big time. And the reason you can't reuse the, sh the uh, shaft, actually this doesn't look that scored up, but. Stop it. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna Stop get it. Stop it. It's, yeah, it's pretty bad, actually. It's pretty scored up. Yeah. But yeah, you see how smooth it is here, and then here it's all rough. Oh yeah, got it. Yeah, she dug in pretty good. But yeah, so the oil is actually flowing through these holes here and helps uh, lubricate everything. And um, yeah, it wasn't uh, doing much lubricating when it had no oil in it. So this one is actually a little bit, actually let me see where's those other, the gooder, the gooder bearings. So this is more or less what they should look like. I mean, this one saw some heat too, you can see. That's what the bearings should kind of look like. But you can see that, you see the copper. You shouldn't see the copper like that until like, more like this, maybe 10,000 miles. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of copper for how young this thing is at 700 miles, so. No biggie, just gotta get a crank and everything for her and we'll be on the road again. In the quad again. What quad? Comments down below. All right, let's wrap this video up. So we just finished up a teardown of the Can-Am 850. So um, in the next episode, we're gonna be uh, doing more of the probably we're gonna probably get the parts in, but we're gonna be doing a lot of the prep of getting the motor ready to go back together. So we gotta clean it. We have to go through the whole thing and um, start checking out. Uh, we're gonna put some new piston rings in it, all kinds of other stuff. So stick around, you're gonna need to see that stuff. So with that, make sure you guys are liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. We really appreciate all the support. And Seth, where can they catch us on the interwebs? All right, you can catch us on Facebook, Instagram. That's about it right now. <laughs> yes, yes, we're, we're pretty bad with TikTok, I'm not going to lie. We, we, we don't even use it, so. Sorry about that. Whatever. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll have to catch you guys next time on Let There Fly. Stay tuned. Have you forgotten?